radical, pioneering, and revolutionary. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kaleidoscope, our 30-minute journey through Girton's past, present, and future. The beautiful piece of music you've just heard performed by the Chapel Choir in Queen Victoria's Consort was composed by Anton Bruckner in 1869, the year Girton was founded. Translated, its title, Locus Iste, means this place, and it's here that we begin our journey. Girton was founded on the principle of inclusion. From the outset, it campaigned for women's access to degree-level education on the same terms as men. This was a first for the UK and fiercely opposed. The struggle came to a head in 1897 when the university rejected, by nearly three to one, 
a proposal to admit women to degrees despite passing their exams. Eggs were thrown, fireworks set off, an effigy of the mistress was burned, and riots continued throughout the night. It was a shocking moment in women's history. However, Girton is, above all, a triumph of hope. Then, as now, the individuals who have shaped our college continued to make a difference, regardless of setbacks. And as we pass through our story tonight, we'll be welcoming a number of very special virtual guests to help us celebrate this fact. Our first is 98-year-old Jane Abraham, who studied here during the Second World War and whose mother and grandmother are also old Gertonians, reminding us how far the college has come in just three generations. Hello, my name is Jane Cole, and I'm so happy to be able to greet you on this occasion. I was a wartime student, but my grandmother and my mother were Gertonians before me. My mother worked for many years at the Fabian Society, but she appreciated the freedom at college. She told me a high point was allowing grandfathers to visit students, no brothers, of course. Despite the war, I enjoyed my time and managed to keep in touch with my friends despite living in 12 countries. My husband worked at the UN. So from far away California, I say thank you, Gerton. You have a great future in front of you. My granddaughter, Rebecca, sitting next to me, may help with the video. Jane's family connection with Girton spans a period of incredible social change. While the college campaigned vigorously within the university, students campaigned across the country, demanding women's inclusion within the professions and political life. Girton's primary founders, Emily Davies and Barbara Bodichon, were lead signatories on the first mass Votes for Women petition, for example. Inspired by those beginnings, our next piece served as a rousing call to action for the suffrage movement as they went on to campaign courageously for change. The March of the Women was a great call to action, which Girton was a part of, striving to include women in every aspect of public life. As Girton's women's officer and as Kusu's first black woman president, I've been able to engage with a renewed drive to inclusion that is part of Girton today. I look forward to seeing that deep seated sense of social justice expand with the times as the next 150 years unfold. In the meantime, happy birthday Girton. Here's to a radical, pioneering and innovative future, as you were in the past. And now we move further through the 20th century. During the Second World War, more than a dozen Gatonians worked at Bletchley Park, making a distinctive contribution to the war effort. They were not, of course, the only Girton women who made an impact. Barbara Wooten, one of the most extraordinary intellectuals of the 20th century, helped institute the welfare state, and Dorothy Rinch, a pioneering mathematician and theoretical biologist, 
found clues to the drivers of protein folding, a process that has turned out to have enormous implications for human health. And finally, in 1948, the university voted unanimously to grant degrees to women. A key theme running throughout our college's existence is one of hidden gems. A number of you may not know that the sounds which make the original Doctor Who theme tune so distinctive were created by Delia Derbyshire, who read maths and music here in the 1950s. Recorded at the BBC's Radiophonic Workshop, this track was probably the first entirely electronic signature tune for television. Through it, Delia's innovative ideas changed the course of music. And Delia Derbyshire isn't the only Gertonian who has been at the cutting edge. Any of you that followed The Apprentice or Countdown will recognise Margaret Mountford. Happy birthday, Gurdon. I'm really delighted I can be here with you in this wonderful weekend of celebrations. I think I owe my career to Gurdon, and I think of college as a place that encourages each of its students to thrive, to be open to question, to face challenge and to grasp opportunity. And I really hope that that entrepreneurial spirit and flair will continue to flourish over the next 150 years. I'm sure it will. And now, let's enjoy the party. As the century wore on against the backdrop of a rapidly changing world, women were leaving Girton to offer their skills as leaders in the fields of law, medicine, engineering, science, and more each changing their corner of the world. Joan Robinson is considered to be the most important woman in the theory of economic thought. Professor Wendy Savage, a legendary campaigner for women's health rights in the NHS, and Dame Mary Cartwright was the mathematical genius who laid the foundations of chaos theory. And then, 40 years ago, while continuing to be a force for women's empowerment, Girton opened its doors to male students. Many of these have also become globally recognised names, such as Herman Narula, the CEO of a multinational technology company that provides software platforms for the ever-growing gaming industry, and Charlie C.M., one of today's foremost young classical violinists. As a fully co-educational college, Girton has continued to widen participation and provide a meeting place for collaboration, conversation and communication. Our next virtual visitor studied modern political history with us in the 90s and has gone on to forge a successful career as a writer and broadcaster, including writing a book about how to talk to anyone about anything at any time. Like Jane Abraham earlier, Imogen Lloyd Webber sends her message to us tonight from the United States of America. There isn't a day that goes by when I'm not grateful for my time at Girton. For so many of us, the college gave us the tools to turn ourselves from being shy, insecure teenagers to the people we are today. If I could debate one of the finest historical minds in the world while being hungover from formal hall the night before, facing down John Hannity live on Fox News would be a piece of cake. Speaking of cake, happy birthday, Girton, and in the words of Emily Davis, what is really wanted in a woman is that she should be a partly pleasant companion. So far as education can give us or enhance pleasantness, it does so by making the view of life wide, the wit ready, the faculty of comprehension vivid. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for something a little different. Music, like sports and the other arts, has always been a vital part of Gurdon's day-to-day existence. Thanks to a generous act of philanthropy in 1990, we have benefited from the energy and creativity of Dr. Martin Ennis, 
our director of college music for nearly 30 years. And tonight, we welcome him to the stage to perform. First, with Hannah Samuel, an undergraduate lawyer and university level rugby player. If there was ever a song that exudes the kind of confidence and self belief we aim to inspire among students, then this must be it. Don't tell me not to live, just sit and wait. Ice candy and the sun's a ball of light. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. Don't tell me not to fly, I've simply got to. Someone takes a spill, it's me and not you. Who told me you're allowed to rain on my parade? I'm marching my bed. Finally, we arrive at the present day, a non-binary intersectional world where our mission is to create a space in which people can be and believe in themselves. Our normal is diverse, our priority is inclusion, and our goal is excellence. We have extended the library, built an archive, erected an environmentally award-winning accommodation wing, taken a long lease on a first-rate graduate complex, and completed a master plan for the main site that will sweep us into the future. We are proud of the legacy we are creating, and you don't have to be a Gertonian to recognise that. Our final virtual visitor tonight didn't study here, but he does demonstrate exactly how far that legacy can reach. Hi, I'm Ed Sheeran, and I'm sending a special video message to Girton College for their special anniversary. Congratulations on uh, making it this far. Uh, my grandmother went to Girton College and she studied music there and then went on to become a professional singer, which I think has, um, I'd like to think, has made me and my brother both be into music and become professional musicians as well. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to send a message and say congratulations on the special anniversary and uh, hope everyone there is having a good time. Lots of love. We'd now like to welcome to the stage choral scholar and director of the College Close Harmony Group, Rachel Hill, to perform a track about those moments that create the future. I've found a love for me. Darling, just I and follow my lead. I found a girl, beautiful and sweet. I never knew you were the someone waiting for me. Cause we were just kids when we fell in love. Not knowing 
Of course, those moments we've just heard about in that beautiful track by Ed Sheeran are about love. But in the context of tonight, they're about aspiration, about reaching for the future, about those perfect moments when discoveries are made, about the resilience, persistence and hope that drives us on. What if, through that momentum, our fellows' research on the impacts of austerity could improve the lives of millions living in poverty? What if our work on the economic impacts of climate change influence how governments, and not only ours, manage carbon emissions? What if today's students go on from Girton to discover a cure for dementia, to inspire a million people through their artistic creations, to win a medal at the next Paralympics, or to create an ethical framework for AI? That would surely be something to value. We've mentioned just a tiny selection of the challenges and dreams that scholars at Girton wrestle with and aspire to. We know we have a responsibility to use the opportunities opened up by a great education to shape the future of the world in which we live. And that future, of course, includes you. Tonight, and over the duration of the weekend, you have given your time to come here and celebrate together, to learn what the college is doing, to listen to the incredible speakers and performers we have assembled, to meet old friends and make new ones, to reminisce and deepen your connection with the college and to reflect with us on what might lie ahead. So we'd like to say thank you to you for embracing this 150th birthday celebration, for being part of the kaleidoscope of activities and people that make Girton College a place to be very, very proud of. 
Proud not just because of all we have achieved over 150 years, but also because of what that means for the next 50. Still radical, still at the cutting edge, and still driven on by the enthusiasm and achievements of people like you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I've got the enormous privilege of being the 19th mistress of Girton College, University of Cambridge. I can't tell you what it feels like to be at this part of that timeline, an institution that has already changed the world, that has filled people's minds with learning and knowledge, that has changed the way they think and the way they are in the world. I can't imagine um, who is going to be standing here in another 150 years' time. But I know that those themes, originality, diversity, inclusion, inspiration, those themes drive this college on. It's a game-changing institution. And whoever is here will look back on all of those new changes. We'll all be part of that. And we thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you.